So many of you all ask me this question. Why, Matt? Why the life insurance industry? You could have made so much more money in real estate, Forex, credit repair, tax preparation, Bitcoin. But in this episode from the South Shore of Chicago, I'll explain why, why I chose to set up shop in the life insurance industry in this episode of the 7 Fears Squad happening in 3, 2, 1. Let's go. Never short stopping. Now I'm winning like I'm G-Dot. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from what? Boca Raton, Florida, in my mentor's office, Patrick Bet David. This is his desk right here. We got some yacht manuals back there. But uh, anyway, I was invited to become a guest for two weeks in a row at the Bet David PBD podcast. So in today's episode, it'll be part two of my talk in South Shore, Chicago of why I chose to be an entrepreneur in the life insurance industry. While we were doing our part to serve an overlooked and underserved multicultural community in the south side of Chicago. Well, if you haven't watched the first half of this, watch this video right here where I discuss how people make money in America. Well, in this episode, I share the reasons why I chose the life insurance industry. And if I had the chance to set up shop again post-pandemic, why I would still choose the life insurance industry. So be ready, go take some notes. Let's take it from here. Let's check this out. So how? You guys got the concept so far? So how? So you can either have a retail business, okay? You can have an online business. You can have a service-based business. Okay, let's, 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 let's unpack this real quick. What do you have to process when you're a retail business? Well, did retail business survive during the pandemic? So what did it show you? you? Might not want to have a retail business, okay? Where it's dependent only on foot traffic. What about online business? Did online business uh, thrive? So it's, it, it, it thrived through the pandemic, through the economy, right? Retail business, not so much. What about service-based business? Did it thrive? No. Think about this real quick. Uh, you're at home. You need, you need food at the house. Who's getting it for you? DoorDash, Grubhub, service-based business? Okay, you need a car wash. You can't go to car wash. What happened to some of these car washes? They came to you. You need a haircut. Remember that? All the barber shops and beauty slums are shut down. What do service-based business do? If they were smart, what do they do? They came to you. Service-based business. So did they, uh, um, did they uh, thrive? So th think about this. Today, the retail location is now going to consider a hybrid. By the way, I, I say this, I have a 12,000 square foot office in Oak Brook, okay? I have a 12,000 square foot office. My rent each month is 20,000 a month. Did I shut down my office during the pandemic? No, because we modified. And we grew, by, we still grew by 43%. So here's the thing too as well. When, you look at, when you're looking at a business, when you're looking at a, in, 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 a, in, in, in an industry, Okay, you ask, okay, if the industry, what problem do they solve? What products do I have to ma manufacture? What type of people are involved? And there's a lot of people in the population, a lot of people in the population need it. Follow me? So these are some of the markers when you're making the decision to invest in time and money. Because here's the issue. A lot of people that needed foot traffic to build their business, what happened to the retail business? What about service-based business people? I have my house, but what a lot of people opt for? I also need a office. I need to rent an office. We have people renting an office. Guess that's what a retail location can be, but you're also selling your product and service online through this thing called Zoom, through this thing called Amazon, right? You're driving ads or uh, making calls. So when, you, when, you're thinking about, when you're thinking about a business, these are things, these are markers that you have to consider when operating. Here's another thing our business didn't do last year. We didn't ask for the PPP loan. We didn't ask for, yeah, we didn't lay anybody off. Matter of fact, we added jobs. There's, there's evidence of it. We added jobs. And, and just two days ago, we, we had another job because he needs help. So we, you know, you can be in a growing business or a thriving business. Okay, some people say, well, Matt, you're in the insurance industry, okay? You're in the insurance industry, uh, okay? I got these things like Bitcoin, stock market, Forex, right? Bitcoin, 
um, I, I want to get involved in real estate, right? Uh, or should I put, consider my money, uh, have more banks? What should I do with my safe money? Okay, so let's take a look. Here's a filter, okay? Here's a system, filter, a filtering system. We have a filtering system called laser test, L-S-R-T. So anybody tells you to put your money somewhere, have this filter. Is it liquid? Is it safe? Does it have a decent rate of return? And does it have significant tax advantages? Okay. What's, what's the problem right now with Bitcoin? Why is everybody jumping all over it? Because it has a crazy what? Crazy rate of return. But does it have tax advantages? Is it liquid? And is it safe? So think about this real quick. Let, let, let's go over this filter. I, I, I think so too, right? I think so too. So let's, let's talk real quick about the stock market. 401k, 4x, because everybody's, everybody's trying to tell you where to put your money, right? How many times do you have somebody try to say, hey, we do, I do online trading. I do 4x. I do all this stuff. Cool. Is it liquid? Is, is, is money inside the stock market Bitcoin liquid? No. Okay. Is it safe? Is money, is money in Bitcoin, stock market safe? <laughs> Today is good. Tomorrow's bad. Today is good. And more, more importantly, do you control it? No. At all. Okay. Rate of return. Heck yeah. Tax advantages. Okay, let's talk about stock market real quick. If you, if you sell it um, under 12 months, what do you eat? Short term capital gains, right? And that's taxed as ordinary income, right? If you hold it more than 12 months, it's taxed as a long-term capital gain, and it's at 15%. Question, Biden just released his tax package. He's increasing this, he's increasing this, I think, 28%. So what does that mean? So if you buy and sell stock, you have to pay, instead of 15%, you have to pay 28%. So you almost practically doubled it. By the way, he told us he's gonna do that. So we, you know, we expected it. But what is that? Remember those companies like Uncle Nears I just uh, described to you? Am I more willing to buy and sell, buy and sell more stock or less? Because I might have to face higher capital gains. Yeah. Think about what it did to the investing community. What am I incentivized to do now? If I'm taxed less, guess what I want to do more? Yeah. Buy, sell, buy, sell. If I'm taxed more, guess what I don't want to do now? Buy, sell. Exactly. So it keeps money from flowing, okay? Uh, 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 what, what about uh, 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 tax advantage of Bitcoin? Does anybody know what the tax the tax are on Bitcoin? Regulations. But it, it, either way, if you buy something at a certain dollar amount and you make money, what do you have to pay? You have to pay capital gains tax. So if you buy Bitcoin at twenty five thousand dollars and you sell it at thirty five thousand or whatever, it's at fifty thousand dollars right now. If you bought it at a lower price and you sell it at a higher price, guess what you have to pay? Capital gains tax, okay. Let's talk about real estate. Is money inside real estate liquid? Yes. No. no, it's not. Right, when's the only time you can get money out of your real estate? You sell or refi? Or is it safe? No. no. Okay. Can you lose money in real estate? Yeah. By the way, before 08, 09, everybody says you can never lose money in real estate. And then, 2008, 2009 hit, okay. What about rate of return? Now, when it's good, does, stock, uh, uh, the, does real estate market do well? Yeah. What about tax advantages? Does, does real estate have tax advantages? Yeah. Yes. If you have a mortgage, uh, if you're single, you can sell it up to two, uh, $250,000 $250, of capital gains, no tax. If you're married, if you sell for $100,000, or if you bought for $100,000, you sell for $600,000, it's a $500,000 capital gain, no tax, if you're married. Wow. Right? So there is some tax advantage to do, to do that. So what's the incentive? I want to buy real estate. So that's a thought, okay? What about banks? Is money inside banks liquid? Yeah. Is it safe? Yeah. Up to 250, right? Yeah. FDIC? Does money inside the banks have a high rate of return? No. no. Does it have tax advantages? No. Because no. even if you make a half percent, <laughs> guess what you owe on that gain? Tax. <laughs> and that's up. You made 50 cents this year. <laughs> Please pay us tax. Okay. Passes through the insurance industry. Is money inside a uh, properly structured life insurance policy liquid? Yes. Is, it, is, it, is a, uh, money inside an index, universal, universal life insurance policy safe? Yeah. Guaranteed by who? The 
the insurance companies, right? And by the way, if an insurance company promises to pay you $1, guess what they have to have? Reserves and the reserves. Guess what a lot of uh, a, a minus and up rated companies have? Reserves to the reserves. To, to promise to pay that $1. So if they have $1, they have $4 to back it. Does it make sense? What about the banks? They have $1, they have 43 cents to back it. Okay, think, think about that. Why? Where does, where does the banks get their money from? Federal Reserve. That's why if you ever go to the bank, hey, let's say you got $20,000 in the bank. Hey, I need 20 stacks right now. Give me, give, give, give me my bands. You know what they say? Give us a week. Yes. Yes, they do. Where's my money? Yes, they do. I just deposited this last week. You can't give me my 20 stacks? Well, yes. <laughs> why? Because they get it from the Federal Reserve. They need a week to get it. Okay? Does money inside insurance have a decent rate of return above inflation? Yes. yes. And does it have tax advantages? Yeah, just like with real estate, with real estate, you have a 1031 tax-free exchange. You sell one property, you can put the capital gains into another like-kind property or higher-based property. It's called 1031 exchange. Same thing too with life insurance, called 1035. So if you have one policy, you find a better policy, you know, five, 10 years later, you can get the second policy, 1035 exchange, your cash value inside the second policy. So instead of 1031, insurance is called 1035. Um, uh, when you take money, let's say you have three hundred thousand dollars of money built up inside a life insurance contract. When you withdraw money, do you have to pay tax on it? No. So the money that you put in, which is called your your what you call your basis, no tax because that's your own money. But the gain, you take that out as a loan. So when you take out a loan to buy real estate, do you pay tax on your mortgage? Say, let's say the, the bank gave you three hundred thousand dollars to buy a, buy a three hundred thousand dollars house. They pay do you pay tax on three hundred grand? So, so the student loan you get from the bank to go to school, do you pay tax on the $50,000 they give you to go to school? Do they? Think about it, you go to school. The bank gives you $50,000 to pay your first year of school. Do you pay taxes on the $50,000? No. No, okay. So if you loan your money from your insurance policy, do you pay taxes on the loan? No. no. So does it have significant tax advantages? So to answer your question, you want to have four yeses. And very, very few these days have the four yeses. And just so you know, I've been doing this for 22 years. I've seen uh, 01, dot-com bubble, 08, 09, Great Recession, and I've seen a 2020 pandemic. China, Brexit, all this stuff. Guess what has kept my client's money safe? Life insurance. Life insurance industry. And so why, why, do, I share, why do I share this? Here's why I share this. Because the industry, the life insurance industry, let me ask you this question. What's your name again? Rachel. Rachel. When I say life insurance agent, Rachel, and I want you to, you're a part of Webster's Miriam Dictionary. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're the illustrator. Okay. And I need, I, I need you to put a picture inside the dictionary to complement the word insurance agent, to complement the word financial advisor. Who goes in that picture based on age, gender, and nationality? Let's start with age. Older or younger? Old. Okay. White people. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Shit's it. Um, um, male or female? Male. She nailed it. The typical person that goes in here is what they call stale, pale, and male. <laughs> For real. That's why the insurance industry hasn't grown. You know why? Because they got guys like me to put $1,500 a month on the Chicago Sun-Times. And none of y'all read the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying, old school marketing tactics. So what do, what do we do to innovate today? You, we use this fancy thing called social media. media. Big reason why I'm here. Big reason why I'm making money, because somebody's advertising on my YouTube channel. <laughs> because, <laughs> because of social media. So in other words, in other words, that product I just described to you is insurance, okay? The, the industry, there's a, there's, a, there's a very low point for agents. Why? Because they're older, Caucasian males. Does the insurance industry look like this? No. No. Yeah. Zero. So guess what we want to do? We want to switch it up. Make it right? I want some insurance agents, we got, we got braids. 
I was, and by the way, ladies, guess who's more prone to handle finances more between male and female? Yeah, why? Men, we get money, we do dumb shit with money. <laughs> ladies, when you get money, nest egg. <laughs> Guys, oh, I'm gonna get the new J's. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Watch, the next time the Apple line to buy a new iPhone, see who stands in line more. <laughs> because you're watching them. <laughs> Speaking from experience there, KT? Okay, right? Think about the timing in the industry. You think today more people need to know more about something that's safe, liquid, has a rate of return, and has tax advantages? Guys, I haven't even talked about the death benefit. Here, here, here's why. We had two of our agents, Puerto Rican couple, Angel and Misty, from the hood, from Humble Park. Is it a rich neighborhood or poor neighborhood? Poor. poor, it's poor. But guess what, we recruited them, we trained them, we educated them to teach their community. This 37 year old man buys a policy. The only thing he can afford is 27 bucks a month. Cool, no problem. Guess what he has? Less than a year, year later, heart attack. Thankfully, he survives. So his life insurance policy, with most life insurance policies, when do they pay you? When you're alive or when you're dead? Guess what happened to, guess what happened to the modern policies today? It paid him $84,000 even though he was alive. What is policy you Exactly, he's got policies called living benefits. So policies that you die, it's called death benefit. But po modern policies today have living benefits. Better yet, if, this doesn't, if you don't die too soon, or you don't have any heart attack, stroke, or cancer, guess what this money turns into? Exactly, money that you don't pay any tax on, which we talked about earlier. So there's, there's three things that insurance agents does. Who, who, who's educating our communities about this stuff? When's the last time somebody, uh, somebody died that you know of, sadly, if COVID was the situation, or sadly they passed away, and they needed a GoFundMe? Why is GoFundMe insurance? You know what GoFundMe is supposed to use for? It's supposed to be meant for your ideas. That you need money for your book, you need money for your business, for your song, like for your invention, like a Kickstarter. Wow. That's what this was for. I didn't know that. GoFundMe wasn't be, was supposed to be for emergencies. Wow. That's what insurance is for. And guess what the rich people know? Guess, do you think rich people have little insurance or a lot of insurance? A lot. A lot. What's the youngest age of, uh, uh, somebody can buy an insurance policy? 18. Nope, 18. nine days old. What? Nine days old. So you think, who do you think invented that law? Poor people or rich people? Rich. You know why? Because they want their nine day old babies start a policy that can stop shoving cash inside the thing, right? So by the time they're 18, a stock pile, pile of cash is in there so they can withdraw without paying a dime in what? Tax. Tax. The company I was just describing to you, right? Our company, PHP Agency, just like Disney, just like McDonald's, just like Master P. Funded the company with what? Money from an insurance policy. Okay. So there's a need for agents because the average agent today is older. We're recruiting younger demographic. Timing. More people need financial education. Are you guys curious on how insurance agents got paid? Collab online. Are you, are you, are you curious on how insurance agents get paid? Okay. Let me share with you. Because everybody knows how real estate agents get paid or you know, lawyers get paid. All right, people get, let me show you, everybody, everybody's, uh, by the way, uh, Kanye West, because of his investment into Yeezy. You know Kanye is the richest black, black man right now? Really? Passed up Dr. Dre. Passed up Michael Jordan. Why? Because he owned. He owned ownership. Okay. So when you're looking at life insurance, okay, so let's say uh, somebody tucks away $100 a month into a policy. It's called premium. Okay, they're contributing this to an insurance policy. By the way, I'm explaining this stuff and who am I? I have zero college degree, I had zero sales or business background. Somebody just taught me this game when I was 23, 24 years old as a single dad, realizing that a lot of people, even back in 1999, didn't have a lot of life insurance. Because when I was coming out to the uh, 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 Marine Corps, there, I had SGLI, Servicemen's Group Life Insurance. How many guys had a job and they had life insurance at your job? Right, kind of a free benefit. For me, it was SGLI. When I left the military, no longer employed by the military, guess what happens to my SGLI? It goes away. It turns into VGLI, Veterans Group Life Insurance. 
and I had to pay a higher amount for that to a point where I couldn't afford it. But anyway, a lot of people today say, okay, let me get some life insurance. Let me ask you a question. Do you think today, because of the pandemic, people are more prone to listening to what life insurance can do to help them? Or do, do, or do they naturally want to reject the conversation? Studies have shown people want to know more about life insurance today. Because they realize, damn, I can die one day. Okay? So guess what? The marketplace is starting to listen. You know why? Because fear sharpens listening. So $100 a month goes into a policy. Okay? And maybe the, a person gets, I'm just throwing out a number, maybe the person's 35 years old and they get like a, a Johanna for a, a, a Curtis for $100 a month policy for a 35 year old male, how much, you know, let's say permanent life policy, let's say a Forester's or NLG policy, how much, how much uh, death benefit would they get? Huh? Half mil? 500,000? Okay. Okay. So, from day one, what's the benefit to the customer? Exactly. They put $100 into it. They get into an accident right away. The insurance company is obligated to pay $500,000 to the beneficiaries. So instantly, did they create generational wealth? From what, what type of money? Did you have to buy a building? Did you have to figure out what fancy Bitcoin or stock to buy? And hopefully it grows to $500,000? Of this $500,000, how much tax do you have to pay? Zero. IRS code 101A says money inside a life insurance policy is free from income taxes. Think that helps the family? Okay. So, okay, back to the agent. $100, you multiply it by 12. 100 times 12 is $1,200, okay? Usually, usually people have a training program when they enter the life insurance industry. Ours, we call that a field associate. Field associate at a 50% commission contract. So, Rachel, what's 50%? What's half of $1,200? Correct. So good, Hercules. I like math. <laughs> you did. Okay. So, how long does it take to educate somebody about insurance policy that they don't have to get a living, to get a death benefit, a living benefit, none of that happens, turns into a stock pile of cash? An hour's worth of work. Okay, you're not an attorney, you're not a surgeon. 25 minutes to an hour to make what? 600 bucks. Do well, one a week? It's $2,400 a month part-time if that's what you want to do. If you want to do four a day, that's up to you. If you want to do uh, one a week, if you want to do four a month, you want to do four a week, it's up to you. Why? This is your business. This is the insurance industry. And, and today, uh, again, you, th you, think, you, think, um, you think there's a problem that we can solve um, uh, in terms of helping people not dying. Can we solve that problem? Sadly, all of us have a, all of us have, all of us have a day, don't we? We don't know when it's going to be, but all of us have a day. Yes? Okay. Here's another, thing, here's another problem you can't solve. You can't solve people having sex. No matter what. When they, hey, oh, why are you guys pinching each other? When that, when that happens... Okay. <laughs> Rachel's like... Yeah. <laughs> quarantine. Quarantine. Yeah. yeah. How, how, how many people have more babies because of quarantine? Look at the guy right there in the dreads. <laughs> you said, man, you said Netflix got old. <laughs> Come here, babe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? So, so, in other words, there's always going to be a market for what we do. And, and, and the bottom line is, once I figured out this industry and figured out how the rich got richer, I figured out what, where they put their money and I figured out what businesses they built. And guess what I, I started to do? And this is just a 22 year progression for me. And uh, as I wrap up, you know, as many of you are looking at this online, how do I find myself in a recession proof, pandemic proof industry? Uh, I, listen, life insurance is not for everybody. Uh, I didn't think it was. I was a door gunner on a helicopter. What I know about sales, what I know about business, what I know about um, sales. But I learned these skills. When I learned these skills, and I found a passion behind it. I, I'd say selfishly, the first three years of my career from 1999 to 2003, 2004, I was just selfish about it because I just needed to make a paycheck. Didn't really find out what it was doing for my family. And then guess what I discovered? I, del I delivered my first death benefit. I had a client that was 67 years old. Her husband was 72 years old. 
They came to my seminar. Sadly, the daughter called me on, on January 1st. She says, hey, um, uh, Matt, my, my, my parents, I usually pick up for a celebratory uh, brunch for January 1st. I went to go wake up my mom on one side of the bed, went over to my dad's side, wake him up. He was cold. He passed away in his sleep. My perspective of the insurance industry changed when I went to the funeral, and I had three envelopes. I, I, had, uh, I had three envelopes on this side and one envelope on this side. Three envelopes here was an IRA account uh, transferring from one generation to another, to her, $200,000. And uh, one was a $150,000 policy, which was a long-term care policy, which they didn't need anyway, so they converted into a life insurance policy. And third one was just a straight life insurance policy that uh, they had purchased through one of my dinner seminars. And the other envelope I had was a paid-off house. So we created generational wealth to go from one generation to another. Why? Because somebody thought enough to teach me these type of concepts. Now, what I just shared with you is not rocket science, but it is basic financial education 101. It might even be 202 at most. It's nothing sophisticated. It's nothing you, you got to be a, you know, a math star. Math was at it. You just got to understand, hmm, these are how the boxes and the dots and the circles all connect. And there's not enough people to help other, other people connect it. It's not even a conversation. And so sadly, you know, there's a, a lot of, um, a lot of um, disruption. There's a lot of people uh, unaware about a lot of these different things. And uh, I, I can confidently say that for myself, and the agent that we, we, we helped serve, we got licensed. Last year, last year we paid our licensed agents in this mix $13.4 million in commissions last year. I'm just learning this, learning this, learning this industry. And we're paying, we're paying our guys much more this year. Better yet, over $42 million of insurance premiums, not death benefit, premiums, were sold last year through just the, the organization that I mentor. So a whole lot more different than it was just me, myself, and I. Because remember back to the whole quadrant thing, right? Me being self-employed, you know what my best year was? 750,000. 750,000 compared to 42 million. You know why, you know why, you know why it grew like that? Because I went over here to the business. I started to scale. I just, didn't, I just didn't want to be a one, one to one, one guy. I want to be a one to many. And so if it can happen to a guy like me, it can happen to many people here in the South Shore of Chicago, South Side of Chicago, West Side of Chicago, in the, in the communities that has been overlooked and underserved by the life insurance industry. So that being said, guys, if you're watching this right now and you, you want to say, okay, how do I connect the dots? Uh, send a direct message to Colab, send a direct message to Johanna. Send a direct message to whoever shares with you this video, and I'm pumped and excited about 2021. And uh, for those of you guys that's out there, you're looking for ways to connect the dots, and you want something that's pandemic proof that you can work from home doing so, give us a shout, and we're more than happy to show this for you. Well, not for everybody, but if a kid like me can do it, you got a lot of hope. That being said, I'll give it back to Joanna. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. Yep. That was so amazing. Pretty powerful stuff, huh? You see, you do not get paid in the insurance industry unless you first help somebody else first. Once I knew that, I knew the life insurance industry was for me. Couple of videos for you to watch. Check out this video right here. Why more millionaires are buying life insurance by financial strategist, financial expert, and New York Times bestseller, Douglas Andrew. And second video here is how millionaires create passive income. And if you want to make passive income and earn passive income, in the life insurance industry, go check out this video. From Boca Raton, from Patrick Bed David's office here at the Value Tame Studios, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Please, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you. Bye-bye.